Calling Jimi Hendrix a guitar legend would be an understatement. Few guitarists, if any, have ever changed the way that we view the instrument like him. Before Hendrix, the electric guitar was still finding its footing in the emerging rock world. After him, it was synonymous with the genre itself, and dominated popular music for over two decades. Between his virtuoso playing talents, his willingness to push the technical limits of his instrument to the extreme, and his ability to write songs that used the instrument in new ways, Jimi Hendrix was the full package. Let's take a closer look at why, almost 50 years after his death, Hendrix is still revered by many as the greatest guitarist ever to walk the earth. just heard is the opening to Purple Haze. For a lot of people, this was the first thing they ever heard of Jimi Hendrix. It was the opening track to the North American version of the Jimi Hendrix Experience's debut album, Are You Experienced? The UK and international edition of that album opened on Foxy Late. <laughs> Regardless of what you heard, if either of these was your intro to Hendrix, it gave a good hint of things to come. Both featured his iconic guitar sound wailing with volume and oozing with personality, but what's most interesting about these songs is Hendrix's chord phrasings. You see, both of these songs have passages built around a specific kind of chord, the dominant 7th sharp 9th chord. Nowadays, a lot of people call that chord by a more colloquial name, the Hendrix chord. Hendrix was far from the first to use this chord, but he was the one that made it iconic. So what makes the Hendrix chord so special? Well, the key thing that makes it stand out is the tension between these two notes. A lot of Western music is built around stackings of major or minor thirds. A major third is an interval spanning four semitones, so the major third of an E would be a G sharp. And then a minor third spans three semitones, so E to G. With that in mind, let's take a look at the Hendrix chord in E. If you look here, you'll see that there's a major third clustered in the middle, but that note way up high, that's a G, which is the minor third of the E root. So the Hendrix chord encompasses both the major and minor third. If these two notes were beside each other, it wouldn't sound right, but because they're spread out, they give the chord just the right level of dissonance to throw your ear off and sound abnormal. Check it out on Foxy Lady and Purple Haze. Now, obviously the Hendrix chord alone isn't what made Hendrix such a good guitarist, but it's an example of what separated him from the pack. Hendrix was always trying to push boundaries with his music. He wasn't happy settling with the easy option. Instead, he was searching for ideas that subverted the expectations of the average listener. And one of the ways that Hendrix did this was with bends. Bends are a technique wherein a guitarist pushes a string off of its usual track, bending to change the note. Like with the Hendrix chord, many people had used bends before, but nobody used them in the way that Hendrix did. Instead of just using them as an accent, Hendrix worked bends clearly into the melodies of a lot of his soloing. He would use subtle bends to tweak notes, but also wild intense bends that would find unexpected notes and create a bluesy dissonance. On his first album, Red House is a perfect example of this. Set in a traditional blues structure, Hendrix's opening solo features a number of bends of different speeds and intervals. As we move to the 
Jimi Hendrix Experience's second album, Axis Bold as Love, we can see this bending trend continue in a lot of his solos. Check out Spanish Castle Magic, where he couples bends with fast runs and quick hammer-ons and pull-offs to create a prototypical Hendrix solo. While his lead guitar riffing and soloing was impressive, I think that Hendrix may have been even stronger in his rhythm guitar, and this is something that really shines on Axis Bold as Love. Check out the title track of that album for an example of this. Anger, he smiles, towering in shiny metallic purple armor. Queen jealousy envy waits behind him. Her fiery green gown sneers at the grassy ground. Instead of being satisfied with simply playing chords alongside the bass and drum, Hendrix adds dozens of little embellishments. These embellishments give his music a kind of driving momentum. There's always something neat and complex going on beneath the surface. Blue are the life-giving waters taken for granted. They quietly understand. Once happy turquoise armies lay opposite ready. But wonder why the fight is on. To create these flares, Hendrix was often breaking up his chords into smaller pieces. He would play part of a chord and let it ring out, while embellishing a small melody on the rest of the chord above. The best example of this is probably Little Wing, which is a feat in guitar playing. That melodic theme drives the intro, but throughout the entire verse you can hear Hendrix continuing to lay down a number of different ideas in the background. He mixes trills and chords and puts dozens of tiny motions in each phrase, filling the song with tiny little intricacies. When I'm sad, she comes to me with a thousand smiles she gives to me. One of the reasons Hendrix was able to do this was because of how he used his thumb. Traditionally, you're not supposed to fret with your thumb at all, but Hendrix would reach around his guitar and fret his lowest string with the thumb. This allowed him to provide a bass note to his rhythmic ideas while he created flourishes up top. While Hendrix's guitar technique is impressive, he had another kind of mastery over the guitar that was essential to his playing. You see, Hendrix understood the guitar as a piece of technology, in a way that few others in his day did. By pairing his guitar with intense overdrive distortion, Hendrix was able to create a completely novel sound for the day. He was quick to adopt guitar technologies like the whammy bar and the wah pedal. His use of the wah pedal on Voodoo Child is responsible for one of the most iconic riffs of all time, and one that really helped change people's views of what these pedals could accomplish. <laughs> Perhaps most amazing about this is the way that Hendrix used his guitar sounds live. It wasn't just studio mastery. Check out his infamous performance of the Star Spangled Banner, where he uses feedback and a whammy bar to create the sounds of dive bombs and explosions. By doing this, Hendrix manages to make an instrumental passage speak volumes in a way that words never could. He used the guitar to imitate weapons for his anti-war music again in Machine Gun. In that song, his guitar sounds like the chaos of war thanks to his use of feedback, loud distortion, and rapid muting. <laughs> Everything 
everything that made Hendrix great comes together in one of his most iconic songs, All Along the Watchtower. In a remarkable feat of creative thinking, Hendrix took an original Bob Dylan song that sounded like this, There must be some way out of here Say the joker to the thief There's too much confusion And turned it into this. There must be some kind of way out of here that decision alone showed his willingness to think outside the box and push the boundaries. And the rest of the song displays everything that makes him such a great guitarist. In the verses, Hendrix puts his famous flourishes behind evocative chord progressions. There must be some kind of way out of here. Say the joker to the thief. There's too much confusion. I can't get no relief. After the first verse, he teases the listener with a short solo section, dancing around the neck with runs and bends. The song features three guitar solos, each of which shows off different aspects of Hendrix's abilities to warp tone to his pleasing. In the middle section, he even used a lighter as a slide to create a specific sound before launching into a wah-heavy phrase. <laughs> The middle solo of All Along the Watchtower is one of the most iconic ever. That entire solo is broken up like a mini symphony, linking together a half dozen melodic ideas. Then in the outro, Hendrix continues to change his solos, pushing for one final climactic explosion. Jimi Hendrix was a titan in the guitar world. He changed the way the world saw guitar and in doing so changed music history forever. Even in this video, I'm only starting to scratch the surface of everything that made Jimi Hendrix such an incredible guitarist. <laughs> Hey everyone, I wanted to say thanks so much for watching. If you want to help support my channel and protect your internet today, you can go to nordvpn.com polyphonic and enter the coupon code polyphonic. I also just want to give a big thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys really help make this possible. Head on over to patreon.com polyphonic if you want to help me keep making these videos and keep improving on them.